My dear pastor, it is over to you now, Pastor Moses. Uh, God bless you as you bless us this morning. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Abel. And uh, thank you, my dear sister, for that uh, prayer. Good morning to each one of you. I pray that the Lord has been with us even through the night and that he will continue to watch over us even through this day as we begin um, Tuesday together. We have been going through um, what I have titled experiences with the shepherd. And uh, I have always said as we begin that about 3000 years ago, David wrote one poem that should help us to deal with the troubles of life today. These 118 words, if you come through in the King James Version, I dare say are the most familiar words of all the Psalms that have been recorded and canonized. And reading this Psalm shall kindle a ray of hope to the hopeless, shall bring healing to the hurting, shall guarantee help to the helpless, shall bring encouragement to the discouraged and provide strength for those who are weak. Allow me this morning to deal and share thoughts from verse three. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, amen. Life is about choices. We rejoice over our good choices and sometimes we never forget our bad choices. In fact, somebody once wrote and said, when we are born, we look like our parents, but when we die, we look like our decisions or our choices. In verse three, David, the psalmist, the psalmist hints to us about God, God, that God will love us enough to correct us when we make wrong choices. And yet more importantly, that God, the shepherd will lead us to make us choose the right choices. Allow me to share just four devotional thoughts from verse three of Psalm chapter 23. Point number one, the shepherd comes in our moment of ruin. The shepherd comes in our moment of ruin. Psalm 23 gives us a beautiful picture of the shepherd's relationship with his sheep. He, the shepherd, must be persistent and yet patient. The shepherd must be watchful and yet wise. You see, the shepherd knows that it's not a matter of if, but rather when the sheep is going to get into trouble or mess up. He restores my soul. Literally would mean he brings me back to my former position or my former place of vigor. He brings me back from my ruin. He brings me back from my bad roots. He brings me back from my wrong choices. He brings me back from my disgraceful behaviors. Remember the story of Adam and Eve. Just after the fall, the Bible records that they discovered that they were naked. In other words, they were lost. They were lonely. They were guilty. 
they were covered in leaves and felt condemnation. But the Bible also says that God came. At that moment of the fall, God came. It's like as soon as there was sin, boom, there was a savior. I am saying this morning, the shepherd comes in our moment of ruin. Romans chapter 5, verse 20, Paul puts it this way. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The Amplified Version puts it this way. Where sin abounded, grace has surpassed it and increased all the much more. I am saying the shepherd comes in our moment of ruin. As soon as there was ruin, boom, there was restoration. Ellen White in her book, Confrontation, page 18, puts it this way, what love, what amazing condensation. He, the shepherd, would place his feet in Adam's steps, and in thus doing, he would open the way for restoration from the disgrace of Adam's failure and fall. Beloved, I am saying, the shepherd comes in our moment of ruin. Point number two, the shepherd actively restores us. And this gives me a picture of the shepherd who goes down to the sheep that has fallen or is lost. And location does not matter. The shepherd comes down. Location does not matter. The shepherd follows you in. The, the location does not matter. The shepherd searches out for you. Location does not matter. The shepherd calls you out. Location does not matter. The shepherd finds you wherever you are. The shepherd actively restores us. I imagine that he picks up the sheep and massages its stomach to probably loosen the gases that have accumulated in the stomach. The shepherd then rolls over the sheep and allows it to gain its strength and, 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 and pulls it up, putting his hands on its underbelly and allows the sheep to get back on its feet. Beloved, the shepherd actively restores us. There is someone out there, you're listening to me as I speak, and probably you are in hiding. You are in this phase of hiddenness. Uh, for, for whatever reason, you feel that you cannot come out and, and you need this, this shade and shadow that, so that no one is able to see you. You, you probably are scared. You, you find yourself naked like Adam and Eve. You, you probably are ashamed. You probably are confused. You probably are full of guilt for whatever it is that you may have done. I say to you, my brother, I say this to you, my sister, this morning. It does not matter whether you are broken with guilt or burdened with grief. Today, I am saying this to you, that the shepherd actively restores us. The shepherd shall actively restore you back. And I say and I encourage you, implore you to pray like David, calling up for the help of God, even after he also found himself in ruin. In verse 10 of Psalm chapter 51, David declared, renew a right spirit within me, Restore me to the joy of your salvation. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I am saying the shepherd actively restores us. I would like you to see the picture also that Jesus paints in Luke chapter 15. Jesus paints a picture and there in the picture are three illustrations of, uh, of the lost sheep, of the lost coin, and of the lost son. Three illustrations that, and, and, and all three um, uh, give us a hint of 
the experience of deep sense of loss. For the shepherd, deep sense of loss. For the woman, deep sense of loss for the father. All three illustrations present to us a strong desire to find again, a strong desire to restore. And so there is much searching. There is much longing for a return. There is much anticipation for a homecoming party. All three sit in the context of certainty. Notice how for the lost sheep, Jesus says when he finds it. Notice how for the lost coin, Jesus says when she found it. Notice how for the lost son, Jesus says when he came to his senses. I am saying all three sit in the context of certainty. David is sure that the shepherd actively restores us. And I want to also notice in the illustration that all three of them end with celebration. All three of them end with this reuniting, this coming together. All three of them end with full acceptance. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd actively restores us. The shepherd shall actively restore me. The shepherd shall actively restore you back to the fold. And there will no longer be a difference. It will be as if you had never left. It would be as if you had never gone. It would be as if you have always been with the, fo with the flock. Point number three. The shepherd leads us to righteousness. You see, the truth is, spiritually, we all have very, very poor eyesight. We can't see what is coming ahead. Corrie Ten Boom, in one of her writings, writes and says, never be afraid to trust the future you don't know to a God that you know. I am saying the shepherd leads us to righteousness. And so as we pray this morning, I will borrow someone's words who then says, it is better to ask God to direct your paths than to have him correct your mistakes. The shepherd leads us to righteousness. In fact, it is Jesus himself who prayed in his sermon that was a lesson to the disciples, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yes, friends, the shepherd leads us to righteousness. A story is said, as, 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 as King Edward VI was dying with cancer, he gave a poem to the nation one Christmas Eve, just before Germany bombed England. This is what he said, a caption of what he said, and I quote, I said to the man at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. And that will be for you better than a light and safer than a known way, end of quote. I am saying, my brothers and sisters, the shepherd leads us to righteousness. Allow me to close with, a beautiful, with the words in a beautiful song that Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote. And I'm reading just the second stanza of this song. They write and they say, 
Lead me gently home, Father. Lead me gently home. In life's darkest hours, Father, when life's troubles come, keep my feet from wandering, lest from thee I roam, lest I fall upon the wayside. Lead me gently home. Brothers and sisters, the shepherd leads us to righteousness. And this morning, may I admonish each one of you, therefore, to follow Jesus, the shepherd. He is the right choice. Follow Jesus. He knows the way. In fact, he is the way. Follow Jesus. He will never lose you. Follow Jesus. He will keep you from falling. Jude 24, 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The shepherd comes in our moments of ruin. The shepherd actively restores us. The shepherd leads us to righteousness. Shall we pray? Gracious, kind, and loving Father, we thank you this morning for your love, your mercy, and your grace, your grace towards us. For oftentimes we wander away and find ourselves in ruin. But Lord, we thank you because even though we do not deserve this, deserve it, you are quick to come to restore us. You love us even while we are your enemies. You love us even while we wander and run away from you. You still long for this fellowship and union with us and you draw us back to your side. This morning, Lord, we say thank you for your grace towards us. And be with us now, Lord, even as we begin this day. Be with us, be with us as we break into our prayer rooms. In Jesus' mighty name we ask and pray all this. Amen.